The clock on the wall says it's five in the morning, and the bar staff are turning chairs over onto tabletops. Yui watches from the corner booth, a bottle of sake to her left, and her latest trophy to her right. The race was her in her element, flying between bikes like nothing in the world could hurt her, hurtling past the finish line, celebrating with her sisters, the Sakura Seven. When Yui said she wanted to party all night, she meant it. They jumped from bar to bar along the streets of Sakai, looking for one that was open the latest. One by one, her sisters had to turn in, call it a night, get a taxi home. She outlasted them all. And yet, it all felt so hollow. With every win, there was pain. A feeling in the pit of her stomach like something was missing. Like someone was missing, out in the crowd, every race. Even the Sakura Seven, her chosen family, couldn't make her ignore the pain anymore. And now she's alone. Alone with her trophy, her sake, and her thoughts. The TK3 is in less than two weeks. She hasn't told her sisters that she won't be competing that she's thinking of retirement. Yui's phone buzzes again in her pocket. She's been ignoring it all night, but something tells her to finally answer the call. She pulls the phone out of her pocket and checks the caller ID. Mother. Yui fights back a shiver. I never get phone calls from Mother. When she does call, it's always early in the evening after Father's gone to bed. A call this early in the morning could only mean... Her grandmother's face flashes before Yui's eyes, and the shiver overtakes her at last. Yui holds up the Hachimaki and studies the autographs of everyone who's ever signed it. Through puffy, stinging eyes, she sees the names of her sisters in the Sakura Seven. Competitors, rivals turned friends like Shinji Tabuchi. When she wraps the Hachimaki around her arm before a race, she wears her life story told in the names of those who have come and gone from her life. She stares at an empty space in the center of the Hachimaki and feels her grandmother's absence. She was the only one in her family to support her as she learned to fix motorbikes and then ride them and then race them. Everything I am, I owe to her. I can't miss her funeral even if it means seeing him again. The man who was so offended by his daughter following her own path that he cut her out of his life, kicked her out of his house, left her to fend for herself. Scenes play out in her mind like a movie that hasn't been made yet. Her parents wrapping her up in their arms, sobbing, begging her forgiveness for what they did. Another scene where they kick her out of the funeral parlor, tell her she's not wanted, and she curses their names before riding into the sunset. She hasn't been in the same room as her parents in over a decade. Anything could happen. Yui lets the Hachimaki rest on her chest as she stares through the blinds at the daylight that drifts in from outside. The long road from Nagoya to Hida is made longer by the seemingly endless tunnels Yui must ride through. The walls close in around her, speeding by without any landmarks. Has she been riding for an hour? A week? It all feels the same down here. She coasts along a bend in the tunnel, and suddenly she can make out a pinpoint of light in the distance, getting bigger and bigger until... The sunlight overwhelms her senses, and she has to fight the urge to shut her eyes. Yui relaxes the throttle, takes a deep breath. No more walls. Just fresh air and forests that stretch out to eternity. A biker develops a double vision when they ride. Yui keeps her eyes fixed on the road ahead, but still she's able to take in the trees that flank either side of the highway. The forests outside Hida were always so beautiful, especially at this time of year 
just before summer reaches its peak. It was through these forests that Yui would go on long walks with her grandmother. They would talk, they would laugh. Sometimes little Yui would cry, and her grandmother would hold her. Their walks would always end at the same spot, a cliffside clearing overlooking the valley below. There, they would sit on a pair of smooth boulders and watch the sun set over the valley. She always found peace in that spot, clarity. It was there that she realized how much motorcycles meant to her. She could use a little peace right now. Yui pulls over and drops the kickstand. The memories hit her like a freight train. She can see their special spot in her mind's eye, smell her grandmother's soap, taste the candies she'd sometimes get at the end of their walks, feel the setting sun on her face. Yui looks out at the forest. I can remember so much about that place except for how to get there. Even as she decelerates, the whine of Yui's inline four engine cuts through the silent morning. She lets the bike roll down the narrow street, looking left and right for any sign of the funeral home. Being in Hida after so many years away is a cruel reunion. She has no time to reminisce, even as she passes alleyways and corner stores that awaken memories long buried. At last, she rolls up to the funeral home and drops her kickstand. She moves in a flurry, peeling off her helmet and leather jacket. She slicks back her sweaty hair and adjusts her blouse, the nicest thing she had in her closet. She walks into the parlor one minute before the hour. The room is already full, row after row of faces Yui half remembers, faces that turn to watch her enter. Yui bows to either side of the aisle every few steps, pretending to ignore the shocked murmuring. Let them talk. I'm not here for any of you. I'm here for... A resplendent coffin rests at the far end of the parlor, surrounded by flowers. The sight of her grandmother's face, a beautiful scowl set in a picture frame thrusts Yui into the past. Memories of curling up under the blankets, her grandmother at the foot of the bed telling stories, her own little world of peace. Mother rises from her seat in the front row. Next to her, Yui recognizes father's bald spot. He doesn't move, not even as Yui reaches the front of the parlor. That pain in her stomach returns almost knocking her over. Have I made the biggest mistake of my life? Mother bows, a gesture Yui returns. This woman stood by while father kicked me out of my home. She let him take everything from me. Now here she is, pretending the past never happened. I was never very good at pretending. Mother gestures to the empty seat next to her, and Yui sits. Father sits at Mother's other side, frozen in his seat, a living, breathing cold front. He was never good at pretending either. The wake passes in a blur without Yui noticing. Incense lit, prayers chanted, all to be repeated tomorrow when everyone returns for the funeral proper. Mother doesn't invite Yui to stay at the house while she's in town. Yui doesn't ask. If he doesn't want me to come home, I won't beg. A couple phone calls later, and Yui connects with a friend of a friend in Takayama with a sleeping bag and a mostly empty living room. But the day is still young, and Yui is on a mission. Yui looks up through the trees at the mountain peaks in the distance. She remembers being so small walking through these forests with her grandmother. But what she can't remember is how to find their secret spot. It was south of the town, along the road that leads to the tunnel. I just need to keep walking south. She stumbles through the forest, fighting off an onslaught of invasive thoughts. 
You actually think father will apologize? Or mother? Suppose you do find this spot. What then? Grandmother won't be there. Just go home. Stop fooling yourself. She'll understand. The road is up the hill to her left. She always kept the road to her left so she wouldn't get lost. So she could always turn back. But Yui's here now. The funeral is tomorrow. Until then, there is no turning back. The stone fox stares back at Yui from its pedestal. She hadn't planned to stop at this roadside shrine. She didn't even remember the shrine being at this spot along the canal in her youth. But something within compelled her to take a break here. Grandmother used to tell a story about these foxes. Something that she claimed happened to her. It happened in her youth, when life was at its darkest and the future seemed darker still. These kinds of foxes were always thought to be tricksters, but to her grandmother, it was a beacon. She came upon one of these foxes while she wandered the forest, lost, frightened. It beckoned her onward, unfurling its many tails to entice her deeper into the woods. She followed with a child's curiosity, feeling her fear wither away with each step. That is, until the fox disappeared. The fox had taken her far, far into the forest and left her alone, farther from home than she'd ever been before. As tears returned to her eyes, she could hear sobs that were not her own. The sound was coming closer, closer. Arms wrapped around her and carried her home. Her mother, Yui's great-grandmother, insisted she wouldn't have searched so deep into the forest. Her little girl would never go that far. But something was guiding her, telling her to keep going. Yui heard the story so many times as a kid she'd have to hide her exasperation. But her father, who must have heard the story more than anyone could count, never seemed to tire of it. Yui looks over her shoulders. The canal street is quiet. Gives the fox shrine a subtle bow and moves on. The cemetery is built on a hill outside of town. Yui walks the spiraling path, her eyes scanning the monuments along the way. Her grandfather is buried at the top of the hill. Grandmother will return to his side once again. Final respects are paid at the polished tombstone at the top of the hill. Yui watches his father places incense, lingering for a moment before returning to mother's side. Yui runs through the plan over and over again. The service will end. She'll say goodbye to her parents, give them one last chance to say something, anything, about the past. If there are other people around, it might put them on the spot. One last chance. We'll see what happens after that. The service comes to an end, and the crowd starts to thin. Yui puts a hand on her grandmother's stone. I need all the strength I can get right now. Her parents linger nearby. Yui lets her feet take her to them. Well, I'll be on my way. Yui bows. Mother bows back, wishes her daughter a safe trip home. Father walks away. And with him goes Yui's hopes. And that's how the movie ends. Not with a dramatic showdown or a tearful reconciliation or a catharsis that brings closure. It simply ends as it began. Mother watches as Yui descends the hill. Don't look back said my goodbyes. It's time to go home. Her things are packed in the seat of her bike. There's nothing left for her here. Yui rubs her eyes. There are no tears. I've cried enough over them. She gets on her bike. My racing days are over. My days of mourning the family I could have had are over. All that's left is the road in front of me. And all I can do is ride.
Subscribe to Lady Judge, because she's my friend till the end.